It takes a lot to amaze me these days, but I must tell you, I have been amazed by Notebook LM. Today, we're going to see what Notebook LM is, go through some demonstrations, have a conversation about it. This is the future, and I'm super excited to share that with you guys. So uh, to access Notebook LM, you go to lm.google.com. It brings you to a very unassuming page, but what it does will blow your mind. So stick to it. We're going to see some cool stuff today. So here are example notebooks that came in as part of the project. With Notebook LM, you can create a brand new notebook. I've created a couple of notebooks. I'll show the one we've created, but let's walk through the UI to be familiar with what this is. Creating a notebook gives you this option. You can connect to your Google Docs, bring in Google Slides, link to websites, YouTube videos, uh, copy, paste text. If you've written something, you want to bring that into Notebook LM, you can do that. There are up to 50 sources you can bring, connecting here, uploading your files, PDFs. You can bring PDFs with thousands of pages. Notebook LM can handle up to 25 million words at a time in a single PDF. We're talking about taking an entire book and bringing that into Notebook LM. You may be asking, what does that give me to bring an entire book into Notebook LM? You're going to see it because it's cool. Uh, once you have it, you give it a name for your notebook. Let's call this Demo Hub Notebook. Here would be your sources on the left. The bottom here is a chat interface. Most of us are familiar with the chat interface. You can bring up the chat or close it here. You can share the notebook with friends, partners, or collaborators and bring up the notebook guide. Once you have a good notebook, you can bring up the guide. This is basic. Inter All right, let's jump in to see a specific notebook we've created around AI regulation. To my left are the sources we've added. I added a link to a YouTube video. Grab the YouTube video link, click on the source, add a new source, paste the link, and voila, that source gets added as part of your source. We have about six sources currently available within this notebook. Now, once you have your sources, this is where Notebook LM comes in. It allows you to chat. If you want to ground that chat in something relevant to you, your own sources, so you might be a researcher trying to talk about artificial intelligence and you have specific sources you want to use, Notebook LM might be that answer. I can come in and say view chat. It does uh, uh, give us some prompt ideas. I'm going to prompt. Discuss the key legal and regulatory challenges posed by the rise of AI in the context of employment decisions. That's a very specific question I might be looking to address. I get an answer, and guess what? That answer is not based on everything Google knows. It's grounded in my sources. YouTube videos, links, PDFs, documents, slides, PowerPoints, you name it. This answer is based on that, and it actually gives you the sources. That's why Notebook LM becomes really cool to have as a chatbot. The chatbot interface is a piece of it. Once you have this chat, you can close it and the chats you create get saved as notes. If you think about it, you have a notebook and then within the notebook, you have these notes that you can save. These saved notes are the different chats uh, I have done over time. Depending on what you want to ask about, you can ask your own prompt here choose the sources you want to be used. If I want to ask the question without using all the sources, you're more than welcome to do that. Describe this. Now it's going to answer this response with two sources being used as opposed to before when all the sources were used. There's very good flexibility with this. Now, if I like this, you can obviously go ahead and like it. You can copy the, this response or note and use that in a blog post, in a class lecture or whatever you're using this for. Very powerful. I can save this and pin it as a note. As you interact, as you discuss, you ask questions, you explore, those responses can be saved into these notes, which you can use along with citations provided. One limitation is um, you can share your notebook. I wish you could share individual responses, but not yet. Right now, you cannot share individual responses, but you can share the entire notebook and the collaborator will have access to all the notes within that notebook. Let's go back and select all the sources here. One powerful thing, and I think this is what almost everybody is raving about when it comes to Notebook LM, and I'm going to show you. Click on Notebook Guide below on the bottom right of the screen. See what comes up. You can do a frequently asked questions, study guide, table of contents. 
some pr general prompts for exploration. I love Notebook LM for the exploratory aspect of it. If you don't have a question, because I think sometimes people, you give them a chatbot and they go blank. It's, what, what do I ask? I have no idea. What am I supposed to ask this chatbot? But let's say I want to get a table of content on this topic. You click on that and it would generate a note. It's generating a table of content based on those sources and it gets saved as a note. Let's go back to the notebook guide. There is this audio overview, and I can tell you this is what a lot of people are talking about. This will generate a podcast-style overview of your notebook, and it's amazing. This is amazing. It took a few seconds. Again, I did this before. 22 minutes podcast has been generated based on all of these sources, and you can come in, download this. You can uh, play this faster speed. You can like this. Or you can share this on maybe a blog you style or on youtube the possibilities are limitless but i think what's even important is just this year it shows how much this is on everyone's minds those are not real people talking it sounds real but they are not that podcast was generated by this notebook lm based on the sources we've used and what I prompted for this to be generated. You can download this. Let's actually go ahead and download that for the sake of it. Or you can come in and delete this. If I delete this, that summary has been deleted. I can go back, customize this and say, um, create the podcast. I'm going to try to direct how I want my audio summary to be generated. To create the podcast. Keep it simple. An elementary for beginners. I, I don't want it sounding sophisticated. I want it taking a simple angle like that. We've deleted the previous uh, iteration. We are now generating a new conversation. I'll give it a few minutes and let's see what this produces. It's okay to leave this page and browse around. I can go to a different notebook, come back in, and my generation will still progress without any interruption. This takes a few seconds. The brand new summary uh, got generated. Let's take a look. And this is completely different than what we had before. So here is 21 minutes. I think before we had 22 minutes summary. But let's listen for the first time. Hey, everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. Today, we're going to be diving into the world of AI regulation. Ooh, very timely. It is, isn't it? And it's a global topic, too. So Absolutely. We've got a pretty diverse set of sources we're looking at today. And we've got everything from state-level legislation here in the U.S., all the way up to the EU's brand new AI Act. We're also going to be taking a look at what President Biden is doing here in the U.S. with his executive order on AI. Right. And help us break down all this legal jargon. We've got insights from experts at Skadden and Holistic AI. Now, let's talk about some practical applications for this. Technology is great, but using technology is even better. What are some of the uses? Think about being a legal professional. You need to summarize lots of notes, lots of cases. Do that in the morning, right before your workout. And during workout, you're listening to uh, a good brief. Researchers can use this for exploring topics, getting frequently asked questions. Study guides, students can also use this. Policymakers can use this as a tool of exploration with AI. Let it explore, let it uncover things you haven't even thought about. That's where AI can connect those dots for us more than always coming in with specific questions. The way to use AI and, and tools like this is the two approaches. One is connect as many sources as you can imagine. Connect to your entire Google Drive. Give it access and let the AI summarize for you. Let it connect the dots. Let it uncover insights. That is one way, exploration. The second alternative is having notebooks that are focused on deep dive areas. In this case, AI regulation, any topic you might be interested in. These two angles to me is how these tools could be used effectively. Now, before we wrap up, let's give some commentary about what this means. The tool seems a little bit early. It's mature. It's been around for a while. This came from a Google project back in 2023 at the time from Google I.O. They announced Project Tailwind Google I.O. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. They were working on this project for summarizing using LLMs and it's grown into what is now the notebook LLM you see here on the screen. Google has a tendency for canning projects. And if projects don't really gain momentum, it goes into the Google graveyard. I hope that this doesn't end up that way as one of Google's MO. Something to be aware of as you're building your workflow around Notebook LM that hopefully that doesn't become the case with this uh, particular project. There are also some things that are limitations that I see 
uh, right off the bat. I'm hoping that those are things that are on the roadmap. One is there's no bulk import. If I come in, I need to pull in 50 sources. As far as I know, you're going to be putting the sources manually right now. If you have 50 websites, I, I don't want to be pasting 50 websites like that. Ideally, I should put them in an Excel sheet and call an API for automation. I can imagine the moment there is an API, you're going to see the podcast scene blow up because people will programmatically load sources, generate the summary, create podcasts. This will be very disruptive to that scene. Something to be aware of, API and programmatic access. And then lack of organizational maturity, in my opinion, when you create notebooks, the notebooks all show up here, as you can see on my screen. I'm a heavy user of Google Drive and I'm used to folders and having a really elaborate structure for organizing everything. Um, if you're familiar with Google Drive, I, I would appreciate having this in that space where you can create a Google slide or a Google sheet or a Google Docs. At the same time, you can create a notebook too and organize it that way. It's something to be aware of. On the mobile, I haven't tried this, but I can imagine that the experience there might not be as much. I'll leave it for you guys to try that out. In the last piece is the content limitation. If you go back here, you can put in uh, up to 50 sources, but maybe you have a situation of more than 50 sources and there are people who might really do have more than 50 sources and you, you can't do that right now. I don't know if that's a limitation of, of the model or if it's the UI limitation. The last question people also ask uh, is what model does this use? Uh, according to Google, Notebook LM is based on the Gemini Pro model, which we've talked about and some customizations to it. There you have it, Notebook LM, a very fascinating, promising product from Google. Almost everybody's talking about it. It all comes out to use cases. I see a very compelling use case here. I'm going to listen to all of this audio summary because I'm curious what this podcast was all about. I can listen to this while going on a walk or on a drive. And I think that's the power of it. I wouldn't be surprised if sooner or later they add videos in addition to the audio you can get a video companion to it. At that point, why do I have to come on YouTube and make videos again? 